Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. I uh, much appreciate you guys checking out the video today because you're about to hear a rant. It's been a while for one, and man, I am pissed. And I've been pissed for a long time about this, and I've been wanting to do a video on it. And today sort of set me off a little bit. Um, something I saw uh, coming back, I was I had to run an errand down to Joplin coming back from that. And I want to basically go over with you guys and tell you guys how developers not going to say all developers but a lot of developers are destroying our fisheries the future of our fisheries the future of our wild places and i'm going to give you guys a ton of examples i'm going to explain to you guys why that is and i'm also going to explain to you guys why it's important that we uh, uh get together on this if we're going to maintain any type of sustainability for our wild places our waters and uh our future of our planet i'm just i'm pissed man Okay, anyway, I have noticed, and you guys too, I've talked about this a little bit before, and I get a lot of people say, Randy, the same thing's happening in my part of the country. It's everywhere. This isn't something that's just happening in the United States. It's happening all over the world right now. But anyway, I was just driving back uh, from Joplin, and there was this one section of uh, woods along the, the, the uh, secondary highway I was on, um, one of the most beautiful pieces of wood you've ever seen. Old growth oak trees, just beautiful rolling hills. There was about probably, a, I don't know, a five acre tract of this. One of those places you drive by and say, man, that is cool. You know, that's just beautiful over there. <clears throat> I drive by today and there's been about five bulldozers in there. They bulldoze, they bulldoze down the every, every single tree on this tract of land or, you know, logging the big logs, burning brush piles, getting ready to put a dang car dealership in on it. And, you know, this just hits me. I have been seeing this so much lately. I was talk I talked to you guys about some places in Springfield, same deal, you know, large tracks of old growth trees, big giant oak trees and walnut trees, bulldoze down for gas stations, bulldoze down for shopping centers. It, it just doesn't stop. And and I got into an argument last week with there's a developer uh, there in Joplin, Missouri, actually close to my mom and dad's house. And there was about a 20 acre tract of uh, land that bordered the creek that I grew up, you know, waiting and exploring where my, where my love for fishing started. It was some of the most key habitat for wildlife in the area. There's a lot of edges to it. It was, it was a forest on the edge of an open field. And you see deer constantly down there. You see all types of wildlife and everything. Anyway, this dude came in there about 10 years ago, bulldozed it all down, and started a housing subdevelopment subdivision right there on the top of this prime area, right along the creek. As a result of the uh, uh, bulldozing he did up to the creek there, it's caused a tremendous amount of erosion into the creek I'm talking about. There was siltation that occurred. And basically that little stream has been destroyed. There's no fish in it anymore. It used to have a lot of fish in it now, but the erosion and the siltation, siltation has basically made the thing where it's only a couple inches deep. And on top of that, destroyed that. And I got to this big argument with him last week. I said, dude, I said, you just destroyed, you know, not only my childhood area that I played in, but one of the key wildlife uh, pieces of habitat in this area. And he goes, well, I improved, I, I, I improved the property. I said, no, you didn't. I said, you destroyed the property. You destroyed it forever. I said, if you want to make it right, go in there and bulldoze your houses down and plant trees again, then it will be right. So I just got so sick and tired of seeing this. And the thing about it, guys, and I've talked about this with Table Rock Lake a little bit, about how the developers down there are ripping off the hillsides, putting in multi-million dollar homes. Um, it never ends. It never freaking ends. And here's what we're looking at here. hundred years ago on this planet, we had 2 billion people on the earth. We've got 8 billion people now that were added, you know, in the last hundred years. It took from the beginning of recorded history to, uh, you know, around 1900 to get to 2 billion. And in a hundred years, we added another 6 billion and it's growing. We live on a planet, guys, that has the finite amount of natural resources. We cannot, we have got to live within balance of our environment here. And if we don't, we're basically, you know, dooming ourselves through our own greed and ignorance. And that's what you're seeing all the time. 
all these developers that are going along right now and bulldozing, just mindlessly bulldozing down these prime tracks of wildlife habitat are not only, you know, they're perpetuating the urban and the suburban sprawl, they're destroying key wildlife habitat all the time. And what happens with that is it's not just the wildlife habitat, it's the entire balance and the cycle of life. Everything that lived like on that, you know, five acre tract of old growth forest, that's gone now. All the creatures that live there, you know, from the from the insects to the birds that fed, fed on the insects that nested in the trees, to the deer, to the possums, whatever, their habitat's gone. They've been squeezed into a tighter area. And the problem that you're having is this doesn't end. This is constantly going on. You look at what has happened to this country over the past 200 years and how we have transformed this country from a pristine wilderness into a, a, an ever-increasing concrete jungle. Put another 100 or 200 years on that. I'm looking at all the area around here at Southwest Missouri that is constantly, the, the sprawl of development is constantly eating up habitat. It's uh, it, encroaching on the lakes and rivers constantly it never ends it's like a cancer that's, co that's constantly eating away you put another 100 to 200 years of that unchecked development on and then what do you have left you know do you have is that what we want to live in do we want to live in a world that is nothing but strip malls gas stations and car dealerships you know where where the value of having natural wild places just cease to exist it it is it's a tragedy is what's going on right now and is perpetuated by a group of people that are oblivious to what's going on. It's just like this developer that I got into the argument with. This dude had zero environmental awareness. He had zero awareness and he could care less about it. The only thing that he could care about is how many lots he could sell and how many houses he could build to pad his own pockets. He didn't care what he did to Turkey Creek. He didn't care what he did to that 20 acre track of wildlife habitat. This goes on everywhere, guys. It's not just Southwest Missouri. It's all over the United States. And in my opinion, what gives somebody the right to go in and bulldoze down a 20 acre track of old growth forest that was here when the Native Americans were roaming this country? Some of these trees out here, there was not a white man around. It was just, it was Native American tribes. They go in there because they bought they because they say they have some right to it because they bought it. You know, bulldoze the place down and put up a gas station. I just think that is just that that is one of the most irresponsible, insane acts that we are allowing to be perpetuated in this country. And it's got to stop. It's it's got at some point as a society. We have got to say as a society, it's like we have got to reel this back in. It's like you guys just cannot go through constantly ripping out this wildlife habitat, you know, putting point source solution in our creeks and rivers, eroding the banks around the creek and rivers, you know, ripping down the hillsides off the creeks and rivers. It's got to stop. And the prime example is what I'm talking about. This place is Springfield. You know, they ripped down this three acre track of some of the most gorgeous oak trees and walnut trees you've ever seen in your life big around is the hood of my truck um, to put this gas station and this uh, supermarket in and right across the street from it there was like a dilapidated two acre section of old businesses that weren't even in business anymore why why can't they build there i mean why can't they buy that and build there and leave the 200 year old oak trees you know standing you know what what has more value would you would you rather have a new gas station to go to or would you rather drive past a five acre track of woods and look over there and see 200 year old oak trees that you know it has some type of a that has so much value even beyond the aesthetic value of it so anyway guys the solution to it in, until it all again it all boils down to politics until because the only way that you can affect change anymore is through political legislation and until we have politicians in power that have some type of environmental awareness that goes beyond greed and profit it's never going to stop and all you dudes out there i can promise you all you guys out there that are big time hunters or fishermen all of the habitat that we're going to have in your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren are not going to have it. The only habitat that's going to be left 
is these guys that can afford to have private leases, you know, to hunt on, maybe even fish on. All the public, the private, you know, wildlife habitat we have is going to be gone. It's getting eat, eaten up by a, just an alarming rate every single day. And when I drove past that, that area today, I, I just got a sick feeling in my stomach. I saw these big oak trees laying on their sides, these bulldozers, you know, ripping through there for just a stupid car dealership. Like there's not enough of them around. So anyway, guys, I'm pissed. You know, I'm, I'm sad about it. I'm angry. Uh, you know, I just, I wish people would wake up. I wish people would get some awareness and wake up that um, the, the American dream, or I don't want to say the American dream, but the, the, the whole need for, you know, profit and power, whatever, it's destroying our planet before our very eyes. Nobody's going to come down and save us. You know, if we destroy what we have here, it's through our own greed and ignorance that we do so. It's not anything else beyond that. And <clears throat> until people stand up and, and, and say that there's more value in having a, you know, some type of wild spaces left where people can get in there and heal and have therapeutic experiences and hunt and fish, um, until we stand up and, and defend those type of areas and uh, make it harder for these guys just to go in and buy this land and rip it apart and put up, you know, some type of a, of a temporary profit making business, you know, we're going to lose everything we got. And it goes, it goes into the entire balance of life. You know, that's the whole thing about when you're talking about environmental issue guys, it's not about saving the spotted owl, you know, which was a big deal years ago. It's about saving the ecosystem and the entire cycle and the balance because everything is interconnected. It's, it's all you guys that are, you know, that cuss insects and all that type of stuff. Those insects play a vital role in the entire ecology because it, it goes up the food chain. And even though that man is at the top of the food chain and we have insulated ourselves from that reality a little bit, eventually we are affected by it. But if we keep ripping apart our natural world, overpopulating this planet like we are, you know, we're gonna destroy the very thing that we, we, we love here. So anyway, just do what you can, man. You know, you know, shout out, be loud about it. You know, you know, if you see somebody that's, you know, ripping down 200 year old trees to put up a gas station, you know, just, you know, make some noise about it. Cause man, I, I'm just sick about it. I'm just absolutely sick. I've seen it so much in my own lifetime, what's happened, the devastation and the loss of habitat that you're never gonna get back. You know, you're never gonna see these guys that, put in these developments to go in there and tear them out and plant deer woods back. It's not going to happen. And like I said, we're going to get to the point where the only places we have to hunt and fish are private, privately owned places that are protected from developers. So anyway, guys, just a little bit of rant, you know, thanks for, you know, listening to me on that. Uh, shoot me some comments with it. Um, if you're a developer, I don't care if you're pissed at me or not. I mean, if you're a responsible developer, that's one thing. But if you're one of those guys that bulldozes down big trees to put in gas stations, uh, you know maybe you should you know rethink your your uh, your motives in life a little bit. So ran over guys. Uh, hope you guys are doing good, and we'll check in later. See. You.